<laughs> so, okay, this meeting is being recorded, audio and video. Anybody else recording it online? Or here we are. Okay. All right. All right. For the pledge of Mr. Alpert? Here. Mr. Case? Here. Dr. Kreth Reese? Here. Charlotte Crane? Here. Misty Tommaso? Here. Dr. Everwine? Here. Mr. Emerson? Here. Mr. Ferrella? Here. Dr. Jalinas? Here. Mr. Locatel? Here. Ms. Latizori? Here. Ms. Lounsbury? Here. Mr. Stewart? Here. Sarah Tucker? Here. Mr. Peters? Here. Okay, we have a quorum. All right. First up, any responses from the audience? Anybody in the audience want to speak? Nobody? Okay. Okay. All right, first up then is student reports. All right, so everything is winding up now for the end of the year. Last night was the concert here at Wakona um, Choir, and the um, concert band was great. Their last piece they combined, which I thought was really cool, how they could do choir and, and instruments at the same time. Right now, the, um, the modern band is playing at the Shire, actually, for Calliope Cal cool. Cafe, which um, I'll probably go to that after this. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the Costa Rica trip is leaving in four weeks over April break, which is the largest amount of kids they've ever had. They're at 35. It's going to be great. Um, the purpose of the trip is to help sea turtles, um, the sea turtle preserve, protect and research eggs on the beach. Which is really, really interesting. Um, spring sports start on Monday for like lacrosse, track, softball, baseball. And um, we have a sphere week this week, a week and a pep rally tomorrow. A lot of us are really excited. Um, tomorrow is mock exams for AP science tests so like physics, biology, and chemistry. And Wednesday was the ASVAB test for military bound students. Um, Green Umbrella did the annual trip to Cranville and Patriots to do their STEM um, program that they do, where they go into classrooms and talk about like endangered species, recycling, upcycling, and things. So they would go through kindergarten, first and second grade in both schools, every class. That was every year. It's such a great response from the students, which is great. Um, that's all I have for you guys tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? Go ahead. I have a question, but uh, my son came home. Uh, after the Green Umbrella uh, visit and was totally stoked about it. That was the coolest thing ever, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Awesome. Great. <laughs> great opportunity. It's great to be back. Um, hey. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, finance report. Warrants. We had uh, several previously approved warrants. And then gifts, donations, and grants. Acceptance of donation to the WRHS Best Buddies Chapter from Dalton Benefit Association. Be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee accepts the donation of $500 from the Dalton Benefit Association for the WRHS Best Buddies Chapter second. as recommended by the District Treasurer. Second. Motion and second. Any questions? Here goes my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing none, hearing none, uh, roll call vote, please. Mr. Alpert? Yes. Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Kreft Reese? Yes. Charlotte Crane? Yes. Bonnie D. Tommaso? Yes. Dr. Eberwein? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Farella? Yes. Dr. Jalinas? Yes. Mr. Locatel? Yes. Ms. Latizori? Yes. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Sarah Tucker? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes, motion carries. Next up, acceptance of a donation from O'Connor Studios to Kittredge Elementary School. Be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee accepts the donation of $1,287.12 from O'Connor Studios to Kittredge Elementary School as recommended by the District Treasurer. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions on this one? What is O'Connor Studios and it just seems like an odd number for a donation sales. Is there something 
Um, they're the organization that takes the portraits and the pictures of all the students and the class pictures. And so that's usually when you um, sign a contract with someone to do that, they usually give something back to the school. So they, it was a donation that they gave back to the school. Any others? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Albert? Yes. Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Crepery? Yes. Charlotte Crane? Yes. Bonnie DiTomaso? Yes. Dr. Eberwein? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Ferella? Yes. Dr. Gelinas? Yes. Mr. Lacatel? Yes. Ms. Latazori? Yes. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Sarah Tucker? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Motion carries. Next up, acceptance of donation to the Jacqueline Harrison Memorial Scholarship Fund. Be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee accepts the donation of $500 from Kenneth Harrison to the Jacqueline Harrison Memorial Scholarship Fund as recommended by the District Treasurer. Second. Motion or second. Any questions or comments on this one? Hearing none, seeing none. Roll call, hold, please. Mr. Alpert? Yes. Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Crefferies? Yes. Charlotte Crane? Yes. Bonnie DiTomaso? Yes. Dr. Eberwein? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Ferella? Yes. Dr. Gelinas? Yes. Mr. Lacatel? Yes. Ms. Latazori? Yes. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Sarah Tucker? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Motion carries. Next up, acceptance of donation to the Sadie and Charles Baraski Memorial Scholarship Fund. Be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee accept the donations of $10,948 from Berkshire Taconic to the Sadie and Charles Baraski Memorial Scholarship Fund, as recommended by the District Treasurer. Any questions or comments on that one? Sorry, motion and second. Any questions or comments on that one? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Mr. Alpert? Yes. Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Crefteries? Yes. Charlotte Crane? Yes. Bonnie D. Tommaso? It's a huge number. Yes. Dr. Eberwein? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Ferella? Yes. Dr. Gelinas? Yes. Mr. Lacatel? Yes. Ms. Latazori? Yes. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Sarah Tucker? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Motion carries. Last one. Acceptance of donation to the WRHS General Fund of the Student Activities Account. Be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee accept the donation of $1,000 from John and Carrie Hitt to the WRHS General Fund of the Student Activities as recommended by the district treasurer. Second. Motion and second. Any questions, comments on this one? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Alpert? Yes. Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Crefteries? Yes. Charlotte Crane? Yes. Bonnie DiTomaso? Yes. Dr. Eberwein? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Ferella? Yes. Dr. Gelinas? Yes. Mr. Lacatel? Yes. Ms. Latazori? Yes. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Sarah Tucker? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Secretary's report. Can I get a motion of approval of minutes to the regular meeting of February 2024? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any questions, comments, concerns on that? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Albert? Uh, can I vote if I wasn't there? Yes. Yes. Oh, then yes. <laughs> Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Crepreys? Yes. Charlotte Crane? Yes. Bonnie D. Tommaso? Yes. Dr. Eberwein? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Ferella? Yes. Dr. Gelinas? Yes. Mr. Lacatel? Yes. Ms. Latazori? Yes. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Sarah Tucker? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Motion carries. Can I get an approval of the minutes of the Regular meeting of February 15th, 2024. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any questions, concerns on this one? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Alpert? Yes. Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Crefteries? Yes. Charlotte Crane? Yes. Bonnie D. Tommaso? Yes. Dr. Everwine? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Ferella? Yes. Dr. Gelinas? Yes. Mr. Lacatel? Yes. Ms. Latazori? Yes. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Sarah Tucker? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes, motion carries. All right, about the superintendent's report. Okay, so I don't have a whole lot. Um, I think my 
kind of my brain is, is very much wrapped around the budget for this evening. Um, but a couple of things. I think one of the things that's going on in the district right now is principals and administrators and teachers are getting ready to administer statewide achievement tests, the MCAS. Um, I think the message, and, and you've probably heard me have written this before multiple times, um, the message that we like to send out to our students is we want them to take it seriously, um, but we also know and recognize that there's a lot more to our students than just an MCAS score. Um, it's not a judgment on their self-worth, um, and that they have multiple skills and talents that go way beyond the MCAS. Having said that, we do recognize that the MCAS are really designed to test the, um, the state frameworks. That's really the intention. The intention is that by the time a student moves from one grade to another grade, um, we, they will have some level of proficiency with those frameworks to help them succeed and be successful in the upcoming grade. It was interesting because this past week, um, I attended a <coughs> civic summit at UMass, and that was very much around um, the purpose of the MCAS, and they had a, a variety of individuals on a panel, um, and I didn't expect to be quite so intrigued by um, other options that are potentially out there, and also um, different opinions on the value of MCAS and how they're used and that kind of thing. So um, it, is a, it is a topic of conversation on the state level right now. It's a topic of conversation on the university level. Um, and if I see any other opportunities to involve all of you, I'll, I'll definitely keep you in the loop. Um, so like I said, that's one of, one of the things in preparation for that that we've also been doing is Mike and I meet individually with each administrative team um, at the high school that includes their department heads. And we really discuss where the students are in terms of their um, level of profi proficiency around the frameworks, um, what are, how we can support principals. Um, we just kind of have a round table of, of discussion around what our strengths are right now, what our challenges are, um, what, what we can actually do to support our students through this process, um, and to make sure that at the bottom line is we want them to be more than ready to move on to the next grade. Um, and those have been great discussions. We just completed those this past week. Um, just encourage you to think about the Apollonian players. I think maybe um, Aiden already said that, but um, they are, it promises to be an amazing performance. So, um, so uh, you know, if you have an opportunity, I would encourage you to, to think about going and purchasing tickets. That's April 5th and April 6th, so that's coming up. Um, I don't really have anything else right now. Um, like I said, we're just kind of buckling down. It's March. Um, and um, just supporting our students as best we can. It's, a, it's one of those months that can be a little bit challenging for a variety of reasons, but the weather certainly has helped. So. Any questions? Um, do we have an update on um, CDC re release the new guidelines on COVID quarantining that we it's no longer do, we do We do, and Liz, you're going to speak to that, yeah. right? Yeah. So, okay. so Kelly Jean attends all the safety and wellness meetings, mm -hmm. so she spoke to that at safety and wellness, so I was going to let Liz report out um, up on that topic. Okay, I when didn't it's see it in your newsletter, in your... It's, it's, it's going to fall under um, Liz's report. Okay. There we go. Okay. That's it. That's it. Good. Next up is me, and I don't have anything other than the annual town meetings. I'll talk about the, the regional agreement and the uh, ad hoc piece. So move on to the subcommittee reports and recommendations. First up is curriculum. Good evening, everybody. Um, I see we have two motions tonight um, under curriculum, but I'm going to ask if we can move, if we can just switch them around and do the JS Bryant first and as the calendar is part of my subcommittee report. So, um, anybody have any objections to that? Okay. Go right ahead. So, I will read the motion. Uh, be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee approves the opening of a new school within the Central Berkshire area, J.S. Bryant, as recommended by the Curriculum Subcommittee. Second. second. Motion is second. Any questions? Concerns? Seeing them, hearing them, roll call vote, please. Mr. Albert? Yes. Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Kreft Reese? Yes. Charlotte Crane? Yes. Bonnie D. Tommaso? Yes. Dr. Eberwine? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Farella? Yes. Dr. Jolinas? Yes. 
Mr. Locatel? Yes. Ms. Latizori? Yes. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Sarah Tucker? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Motion carries. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Move on. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. So um, we met last night on Zoom, and we had three things to discuss. Uh, one of which is the approval of the 2024-2025 uh, school calendar. Um, so I'll read the motion, and then we can have discussion. Be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee approves the 2024-2025 school cal year calendar as presented. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions? Um, I know I have brought this up in previous years. I do not approve. Um, I do not feel that the religious holiday should be listed on here, uh, given that I know that one of the justifications in other times were that these are days that teachers should be aware that they might have students that are either out or they might you know, be fasting. The problem I see with this is that it's either all or not is there's plenty of other fasting days and days that students may be out besides these major ones here. Um, I think, uh, again, they can, uh, this can be addressed next year, but um, these are more of the major ones and we do have some uh, hand pockets of students where kids need to be out. So if there are other holidays um, where the teachers do need to be aware. Um, we can make note to put them on the calendar next year. Um, but it, to, to me, it just sort of, I mean, I don't necessarily know if Hanukkah and Kwanzaa needs to be on the calendar as religious holidays because it falls during winter break this year. But um, other than that, and then we did also talk about Good Friday. Again, that came up uh, because it has come up in the past. This year, uh, this upcoming year, um, Good Friday actually happens to be the Friday before spring break, so it just sort of makes sense as that's going to be the day off, given that all the teachers have so many holidays. Um, but we were discussing that maybe um, in the years going forward that you survey the teachers or maybe the families to see how many kids and uh, staff will be out Good Friday. Mm -hmm. Because um, I know, and Amy Jolinas brought this up last night, traditionally that's a day where lots of staff and students tend to take the day off, but we just don't know how true that is anymore in this, that, in today's, uh, uh, in, in today, in the day, in today's day and age. Um, so, I mean, it could be that maybe we just give the Friday before spring break off, or maybe um, the Monday after Easter if we think that people are going to be traveling and won't be in school because not because of the religious holiday necessarily, but because of um, traveling. So, um, but other than that, the everything seems pretty standard on the school calendar. Any other comments, concerns? Okay. Um, I, I would just same thing as last year. Um, I, I don't think this calendar needs more jobs than to tell us when we're in school or not. But it is what it is. Um, so, anybody else? Is that somebody? Anybody else? Okay. Liz again. Uh, may I recommend uh, the an amendment to re remove the religious holidays? This was said last year that we'll look at it next year, and now it's next year, and it wasn't handled this year either. So. You're okay to make a motion. Uh, I, I motion to remove the religious holidays from the 2024-2025 calendar. I'll second that. Huh? i got a second. Okay. Any do, more discussion about that? Do you, do, you just, do you just mean this box here? Just this box. And then um, I, I could take or leave the Good Friday, but I do understand the, the argument about saying that it's, you know, day before and most people or many people do take off that day anyway. You, you could just not list it as Good Friday. Or just not even list it as Good Friday. Just <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah. say that you're so taking any the religious time. holiday that is not a federal holiday. Mike? Yeah. Yeah, the only comment I have is on the other side of the paper. It says half day for all district students if there's a six days 
snow day for the district would make it up on the half day of school on a good Friday. So, let's so I mean, address everybody's going to take it off anyway. Yeah, yeah. So let's address the motion on right now. The motion is to remove the religious holidays. Right. So uh, any other comments about removing the religious holidays? Seeing none, uh, roll call vote, please. Mr. Albert. Just we're talking about just, re just removing, removing the, the holiday box. Yes. Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Crefteries? No. Charlotte Crane? Yes. Bonnie DiTomaso? Yes. Dr. Eberwein? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Abstain. Mr. Farella? Yeah, yes. Dr. Jolinas? No. Mr. Locatel? Yes. Ms. Latizori? No. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Sarah Tucker? Yes. Mr. Peters? No. What's your count? One, two, so uh, the answer is yes to remove the religious holidays. Box, just the box. Okay, any other? It was, sorry, it was, it was um, 10 yes, one, two, three, four, no. And one abstain. And one abstain. Okay, so we're gonna remove the religious holidays from the calendar. Any other? Let me ask a question. The, uh, the half day in service days, what determined when we were going to do those? I, mean, I know there's several, maybe it's a different answer for each, but. We try to stretch it out throughout the year. So um, it's a little bit more concentrated in the fall because a lot of times when you're working together as a group, what you're trying to do is collectively build knowledge and expertise around teaching and learning or around social and emotional support. And it's going to be more beneficial to teachers in terms of supporting students if you have that, up, if you upfront those days. And But they're also, pre that's that's been sort of, fairly consistent throughout the years. So it's it's fairly consistent. The days are similar. I mean, obviously they fall on different different days, but the timing is similar to what it was this past year. Yeah, but well, we had comments last year about that, and we wanted it, uh, you know, wanted to line up with the, uh, with the county if possible. Uh, and apparently there was no attempt to do that. Is that correct? I haven't had a lot of feedback in terms of wanting to do that at this point from teachers. Um, and I think the other thing is when we looked at our strategic plan, one of the things that we've talked about is wanting to make sure that the professional development is in line with our strategic plan. And while I, I do agree that the countywide um, offerings can be great, we don't know right now if they line up with our strategic plan. That's been the biggest hurdle for us and barrier. Um, in terms of moving forward, we we also we do um, upon request um, let teachers go to that PD, and we actually hosted one last year on that day at Wakona. So we do participate. So any teacher that wants to go can go on that day, um, and like Mike said, we did host one here. So we're we're op we're definitely open to it. We support it, but we have not put it in our calendar. Dave? Um, how did, how have you determined interest? I mean, have you asked teachers? Um, Are you no, I haven't. <clears throat> I haven't. I've specifically, usually I depend on the CBA leadership team to determine interest. Usually they go to them and then they so come see me. kind of query everybody and then? Yeah, because they go to their representatives in their buildings. So I do it that way. Okay. Anything else? Mike, you want to? You, you had a comment about the snow days? No, Did you want to just, change? Just, just for the discussion of uh, Good Friday. Somebody said, you know, most of the kids take it off, and then we have a schedule as a yeah. possible snow day replacement. Yeah. I just think that's because it's the next nearest holiday after we know we're done with snow days. Right. <laughs> I don't think we've got to worry about that. 
One year ago today. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any, any other questions, comments, concerns on the calendar? I just wonder, like, we just took out the religious holidays, but we're leaving in Good Friday. Yeah, we took out the box. Oh, yeah. So I thought we were just going to list it as yeah, April 18th. I just 18. wrote L in that. Huh? <laughs> I thought we were just listing it as April 18th, like, day off. Yeah. That wasn't part of that motion? The motion yeah. was to remove the box? Yeah, right. But you're still listing remove? Good Friday uh, in there, yeah. which is why I said no. Right. <laughs> So, you're going to do it, do it. Any other Don't motion? Are we all uh, set? Motion to remove reference to Good Friday, both in the list in the middle and for the half day. Just refer to it as second, whatever, 18. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to remove the words Good Friday on the calendar. Any discussion on this? Uh, I'll Paul? just make the comment that I think Good Friday should say up there because it's an actual day that's referenced and there's an X through it and there's a, another okay. reference with a half day piece on there whereas these in the box here don't specifically have attachment to X out days if that makes sense. That's my comment. Yeah. Any other comments? Um, how would we Label this. We would just label it April something. Day off. The Friday, Friday before Easter. Yeah. <laughs> no. Don't say. Well, people have to label it. What are we going to do? I mean, you could you could say you could start. You could add it to the spring break. You could add it to the spring break. Spring break. Spring break on the 18th. Yeah. You would add it to the spring break. You would just call it, you would roll it into as being part of spring break. That, that would. Spring vacation. Yeah. Right. This year, you can get away with that. Right. right. Next year, you have to figure something else out. Pretty much. You could just write no school. You could say, or no school or spring yeah. long weekend. Yeah. Something like that. You wanted to do it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Rich, can I just tell the motion is the motion is to remove the reference to Good Friday listed on April 18th? Yes. Mm -hmm. Period. Okay. Thanks. The, the two references to Good Friday and then in the half day section. Yeah, that'll come off anyway when you do that. Yeah, that's just a reference on the back. Yeah, thank you. Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Albert? No. Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Kreftries? Yes. Charlotte Crane? Yes. I want to remove. But you wanted the box. Bonnie Di Tommaso? I don't want the box. Yes. yes. Dr. Eberway? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Farella? Yes. Dr. Jolinas? No. Mr. Lockato? Yes. Ms. Latizori? Yes. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Sarah no. Tucker? Yes. yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Thirteen to two. Yep. It's Just to clarify my two. thinking, if none of the other holidays are mentioned, then Good Friday should not be mentioned either. That was my yeah. thinking. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> anything else on that? We gotta we gotta approve the calendar now that it's been amended twice. <laughs> anything else on the calendar? The thing that I thought wasn't going to be controversial. Exactly. Approve the calendar as amended. Well, I think we already had the motion. Yes. We had a second. No, as, so as amended. <laughs> no, he just said said. motion as amended. Right. Second. Second. Any <laughs> other questions? <laughs> Not here, good. See, good. Wow. Can we get a roll call vote on the calendar? Mr. Albert? Yes. Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Crepreese? Yes. Charlotte Crane? Yes. Bonnie Di Tommaso? Yes. Dr. Eberwein? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Farella? Yes. Dr. Jolinas? Yes. Mr. Locato? Yes. Ms. Latizori? Yes. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Sarah Tucker? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Motion carries. Anything else? Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> we also heard an update from Assistant Superintendent uh, Mike Knoll on the Curriculum Council. So when last we discussed this, the group had simul decided to simultaneously pilot both EL and Wit and Wisdom programs for K through eight. Um, piloting began as of last week. Each pilot group contains eleven teachers. 
Um, the teachers have started filling out feedback note catchers in real time so they can capture what they think of the program and give types of feedback, uh, generally whether it's positive feedback, negative feedback, a question for the vendor, uh, how it aligns to the standards. Um, and then uh, the area of the feedback that's technical or a program task or text quality. Uh, so far there are nine pages of feedback. Um, all feedback, feed, uh, feedback will be put into a scoring rubric and then open for discussion with all parties uh, in the Curriculum Council for final decision to be made in April. In April. Um, official selection announcement to staff will happen April 22nd. Contracts will be signed. And PD uh, professional development is to start May 17th. Um, costs of the programs are both uh, are about the same and the hundred uh, thousand dollar grant that we have will cover at least three years of the program depending on what materials program enhancements and professional development options we choose um, and then uh, we will come back and uh, discuss it at curriculum and curriculum next uh, month uh, to hear about what the final decision is um, and then uh, Superintendent Mike, uh, Assistant Superintendent Mike Knoll also gave a presentation on winter benchmarkings for grades uh, K through 10. Um, they do quarterly assessments with benchmarking done three times a year and MCAS being the fourth um, of those. Uh, there are, are two ways of assessing the data. There's looking at the student skills against their cohorts across the country and then looking again at the same students against their cohort uh, against the state and the state standards. Um, the evaluation teams are made up of Leslie and Mike and the building administration, subject team leaders and curriculum coordinators. They use three different tools uh, for benchmarking, um, K through, uh, uh, for grades um, K through six, and then two for grades uh, seven through 10. Um, Amplify by Dibbles, uh, which is relatively new, is uh, the one that we do for K through six, and it's a reading, it uh, measures reading fundamentals and it's also a dyslexia screener. Um, this measures uh, against uh, countrywide standards for uh, alphabet principles, uh, phonemic awareness, I said that correctly, um, <laughs> sound fluency uh, and comprehension. Um, the benchmarking showed that grades uh, K through two are doing very well and are showing tremendous growth mid-year. Um, grades three through five, uh, Growth usually slows, as studies have shown, it's a little tougher to teach reading fundamentals past the second grade without some form of inter intervention. Um, what you typically want to see in fifth grade is that students are up at or above the 60% mark at this point in the year. Our fifth graders are at 64%. Um, the district would like to see that clip number closer to 70%, so there's a little work to do, but we're still in good shape. Um, our third graders are a worry spot. They showed a decrease to the national uh, levels um, this year uh, in reading fluency and comprehension. So some interventions are being explored to see how best to help guide these students to get where they should be by fifth grade. Um, for sixth grade, since uh, this benchmark wasn't used for them in elementary school, this is just sort of used as a dys uh, dyslexia screener and any other types of uh, issues that they might have with comprehension and reading. Um, it did show that 43% of the sixth graders are reading below grade level. When blocks were used to, as a support mechanism for this group, they were able to move 8% more back to reading at proficiency, uh, grade level pr proficiency. But it also showed um, that uh, admin showed administration that there really is no uh, are no good interventions to help kids increase their reading skill levels in middle school. Um, the next. Uh, tool for benchmarking is Ames Web. It's math uh, for grades three through five. This is a skills-based assessment tool and it's a little outdated so administration will be looking to see how we can replace it going forward. Um, but the tiering for it is much like Edge Elastics. Edge Elastics uh, is used in grades three through ten. It's uh, the program where they use old MCAS questions to teach, to test kids and benchmark for state standards. Um, in ELA through grades three through five, there's uh, graders are showing growth from the beginning of the year till now um, with proficiency to state standards with the biggest jump being in third grade. Sixth grade also had a tremendous jump while seventh and eighth grade maintained, which is actually good because uh, usually you tip, uh, see declines across the state in, uh, for those grades. 
Narrative writing is an area of concern for sixth and seventh graders, uh, where, and inferences are a concern for eighth. Tenth grade also made a big jump, uh, creating uh, what they found was creating an environment for benchmarking similar to the environment that where they take MCAS, which is just in a room, not during a class period, but you're taking your benchmarking exams like you would be taking your MCAS, really made the kids take it more seriously, and the scores went up. Um, Math, uh, third grade had a big jump like they did in ELA um, to around 53%. Fourth and fifth graders are hovering around 43%, which is an area of concern. Uh, state level is, uh, statewide proficiency is about 40%, but we want to be better. Um, sixth grade also had a huge proficiency jump to about 64%, um, while seventh and eighth graders are maintaining, but still under 50%. Teachers participated in three intensive sessions of PD with Mount Holyoke, which helped them to reframe how they would like to teach math. Other subjects are also starting to step up in teaching math standards where, where they're found to, be, to pertain to the subject matters, like geometry is being taught in advanced engineering, um, measurement conversion is being taught in science, box plots and graphing, and social studies. Uh, tenth grade ended last year with 16% proficiency and is now sitting at 60%. Uh, a credit goes to the math interventionist. Uh, for this jump, uh, where they can take the live data as kids are answering questions and then digest what's happening per student and deliver individualized real-time help. Uh, science, uh, edgelastic benchmarks uh, saw growth in fifth, eighth, and tenth, um, especially in high school biology. Once we get a look at the new science MCAS, we'll have a better benchmark uh, idea of what kind of benchmarking methods we need and maybe some guidance on uh, curriculum needs. Next steps are for administration to break down all the data and figure out what areas to target for student help between now and MCAS time. Um, benchmarking reports were also sent out to all elementary school families for the first time this year as a tool to show families where their children are sitting skills-wise and also as a way to help Title I tutors uh, tailor needs to particular students. Uh, the plan is for next year to expand benchmarking letters to all uh, families through uh, grade 10. And the district is looking to expand uh, universal screenings for dyslexia and other learning, reading learning disabilities from K through 6 to K through 10 in the future. Our next curriculum subcommittee meeting will be uh, Wednesday, April 24th at 7 p.m. on Zoom, where we will hear from the Curriculum Council on the final ELA uh, curriculum selection, and Mike Pinnell will also go over the new science MCAS and um, potential for new science curriculum piloting. You did a great job, sir. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As you can tell from Ellen's report, which was very comprehensive, what was presented to us by my panel was very comprehensive. Yes. And I just want to say that um, as long as it was, it was <laughs> really worthwhile because not only did we get a sense of how our students are doing, but even more importantly, how the district is approaching growth, the things that they're doing. Uh, and very specifically, and it, it was very enlightening, and I think it just uh, is a credit to our superintendent, assistant superintendent, principals, that, that they're really uh, focused on making this a terrific district for our children. And I just want to put my two cents in about that. And I think this was super important because it's very hard to digest the NCAS information when it comes out. Yeah. This was more grabbable, and we can see where each grade had its issues, and it's nice to know that everyone's really getting, trying to wrap their hands around what it is that we need to do to help make these students as successful as they can be. It just, it still is a little strange that kids are doing well to, on the state standards, but not as well on the national standards. Still a little hard to wrap my head around that one, but I mean, I guess it, it just is what it is. The 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 discrepancy, I think, is that the the nationally norm test is really measuring skills mm -hmm. that progress. So the testing is actually different throughout the year, mm -hmm. um, and the standards don't change. So like the 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 test is static for. Um, 
the, for the standards so you can make more growth towards that whereas the the target is always moving and if you're not if you're already behind if you're not growing faster than a year's worth of growth mm -hmm. then you're always going to be behind and you'll actually start going backwards which is why third fourth and fifth grade we see that um, it, it's harder to catch up um, so that like what the the reading data really is a moving target for kids. It's just, that's one way to explain it. Great. Any other questions? Comments? Thank you, Alan. That was comprehensive. Thanks. Okay, next up is uh, finance. We ain't got nothing to do tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's only take a, only take a minute. Uh, so good evening, everyone. At the Finance Committee met on February 29th at Wakona. Uh, Superintendent Leslie Blake Davis and Director of Finance and Operations for Arizona informed us that nothing had material, materially changed in the budget from our last presentation except for FICA costs, which were updated. Uh, we were also informed of a CPPI grant to provide funding for early childhood education. The grant involves community partnerships, um, and if, if it is awarded, it could offset some operational costs. So hopefully, we get. Um, there was much discussion around the assessment of uh, assess assessment to the towns and how we could use more funds potentially from rural aid to offset uh, further assessments or offset the assessments further. Um, the committee moved to increase the rural aid contribution um, to revenue, which brought the average assessment to towns down to about two percent. Um, it was determined as soon as new rural aid numbers were provided to us from the state, the finance subcommittee would reconvene and plan to um, dig into that to determine what those impacts would be on future budgets. Uh, there was discussion around how the capital budgets and operating budgets should be defined and allocated as there seems to be um, different interpretations at different districts around the state. We briefly discussed the regional agreement, but there, at the time there were no material changes, uh, as long, al along with no updates from the towns. Uh, our next meeting is Monday, March 8th at 6.30 here. Topics for discussion will include uh, the brochure for towns and Central Berkshire's audit review. Okay, you want to present the budget? Or yeah. You... Uh, go ahead, sorry. April 8th? Was that, was that, you said March 8th, Monday, March 8th. You mean April? Mark. <laughs> I mean April. It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I should know this. Yes. Yeah. 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 Gotta go forward. <laughs> March 8th. No? no I think April. it's, I think it'll be March 18th. That's this upcoming Monday, March 18th, oh. I think it is. Yeah. It's next Monday, right? Uh, March 18th. March 18th. So yeah, I forgot a one. That, that's pretty important. March 18th, <laughs> which is next month. <laughs> okay, thanks, Paul. We're going to do the presentation before the, uh, before the votes, yes. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, much of what you're going to see tonight in the budget is very similar to what you saw last week or a couple weeks ago. Um, and similar to what you saw when we presented the initial budget. Um, we did meet in finance. As you know, we've been working very closely and collaboratively with the finance subcommittee. Um, one of the discussions that we had that you also just heard from member um, uh, Paul Farella is how we could offset the assessments to the towns um, more than we had listed in the tentative budget. So what you're going to see in this budget is a lower average assessment to the towns. Um, than what you saw in the other in the budget when, that was approved, the tentative budget that was approved. Um, some of the things that um, the I'm going to go to the goals. So the goals um, are very much the same. Um, we prioritize being fiscally responsible to our towns, but we also balance that at the same time with prioritizing. Um, offering high quality educational opportunities to our students. We are still somewhat feeling, as, as you can imagine, um, the, the results of um, students not being in school a few years ago. Um, our third graders are probably feeling it the most. What we're seeing and, and what we're looking at and what Ellen in, was referring to in uh, the assistant superintendent's presentation is basically that we have been able to move more students with three tiers. Um, we've been able to move more students into tier one, um, just 
being in school, solid, really, um, instruction, hardworking teachers, um, we're definitely seeing some movement. What we're most concerned about um, at this point would be those students who are in Tier 2, hovering maybe on Tier 3, and what that means is they need more support than most students. They And, and at times they need substantially separate um, programming and a real level of expertise to help them uh, really progress with their foundational skills in ELA and math. So as you know, we did discontinue our Title I tutors. Um, we are going to be looking, we're going to have a very concentrated approach, but we are going to be watching very carefully this year to see um, how we do with slightly, with, with not necessarily without those supports, but, not, but to see do we need to think about um, an additional reading interventionist next year, an additional math interventionist coming up, um, because we are definitely seeing a need where we value those, uh, that expertise that some of those teachers have, um, and that's, that's our biggest area of, of concern right now moving forward. So this slide is very similar to what you've seen in the past. So this is something new that we're showing this year. This is our gross revenue for the budget. So this is using our operating funds, um, revolving revenue, or grant revenue. So what made up the budget for the tentative budget is pretty much the same. We're just moving around funds. So like Leslie said, we're using more of the um, FY25 rural aid funds instead of operating funds next year. So this screen is pretty similar to what you saw at the tentative budget. Overall, these are the increases and decreases that you see in the FY25 final budget. Salary increases, um, that includes contractual in increases, FICA taxes, which we pay for payroll, ta um, payroll, and then we did add a one FTE teacher at Craneville um, just for class sizes. So the increases for salaries are about 683,000. Transportation, we are moving into year three of a five-year contract. Um, we do see a 3% increase year over year, so it's right around 50,000. We saw increases for both active health insurance and retiree health insurance of um, retiree, retiree health insurance back on January 1st of 2024 of a 5.5% increase. And we're going to see a 7% increase for active this coming July. Um, Berkshire County Retirement saw an increase as well. That is a amount that is set by Berkshire County Retirement. So all of our teachers are part of MTRS. Um, our custodians, our MS assistants, paraprofessionals, they're part of Berkshire County Retirement. We are hopefully going to see the last um, band payment in our operating budget. So this is an increase of $121,000. That is for the band interest and part, part of the premium. The last large increase we saw this year was special ed tuition. We did have some kids move into the district or move out into placements after the budget was approved last year. So this is the first time that it's being added to the operating budget. There were a couple of decreases overall. Um, we had some salary decreases amounting just about just under 250,000. That's the um, reduction of a one FTE STEM teacher, five Title I tutors, and then two FTEs, um, RBTs, or registered behavior technicians. We are also seeing a decrease in our charter school tuition. There is also a charter school um, charter school revenue that we um, we also get from the state, but that's much smaller, so that also decreased. Overall, we had increases of 2.2 2 million and decreases of just under 400,000, so that does add up to that 1.8 increase you saw on the previous slide. This slide shows um, some of the, uh, so this shows the other funds that are using for salaries in the FY25 budget. The only change on this screen was the rural aid. So if you look at the very bottom gr green line on the left-hand side, that did increase by about 250,000 from where it was in the tentative. So these grant funds make up just about 12% of our salaries, revolving funds make up about 5%, and then the operating makes up the other 83%. We are also using some of FY24 rural aid to help offset our budget. That's through prepaid tuition for some of our special ed students. And we're also prepaying some of our expenses that we were able to um, in FY24 for FY25. We are also, year over year, we do see circuit breaker revenue from the state. So that is something that's always been there. Um, just about 250,000 will be used for special ed tuition next year as well. So overall, we are offsetting the budget by $4.4 million. And that's where we're sitting for the the general fund uh, revenue or general fund operating budget at 4.4 million or 30 million 
Nice. That'd be nice, but. <laughs> <laughs> Super nice. So where we're sitting right now, year over year, it's a 2.28% increase, or just um, just under 700,000. So 692,282. The revenue projection, so this slide has not changed pretty much at all since our tentative. Um, with the exception of when we moved around the money from two rural aid, the town assessments did decrease. So those are sitting at a 2.01 currently, or a 352,000, 352,567 variance year over year. Well, the next few slides have not changed, so I'll go through it pretty quickly, but stop me if you have any questions. So this makes up our five-year rolling average for our operating assessments. So from October 2019 through October 20, 2023, um, that makes up the five-year rolling average for each of the towns. So you can see Beckett sitting at a 9.66, Washington at 3.91. We also added in that column for school choice students, which is the third from the right. Um, we have remained pretty steady with our school choice. The other column would be tuition-based preschool students. So if you see that one. This is just a chart that's showing the previous slide. You can see we've been pretty steady. The bottom one is our school choice students. And then if you go to the red one in the middle, that is our district students. So if they are living in one of our seven towns, we have seen an uptick in both the, um, our district students and students overall, the top green line. So this slide shows the makeup of where our students are in one of our five, five schools. So Becca Washington, Kittredge, Nessicus. So you can see that 29% of our students are at Craneville, and then 23 are at Nessicus. This is as of October 1, 2023. These, this shows our certified FTEs by school. This has not changed since, I believe, the initial or tentative budget. And you can see that, for instance, for art at the elementary schools, 0.2, we have a 0.2 at Beckett, we have a 0.2 at Kittredge, 0.6 at Craneville. Um, it changes a little bit with the high school. You can see there's a 0.6 at Nessicus, but 1.4. Um, it's just, you can see it higher at the high school just because of the programming needs. And we use that to kind of look to see where our students are and where our certified FTEs are. So you can see that they are pretty close. They all come between, I think, a two and a 5% change. But you can see that 6% um, of our students are at Beckett, 8% of our staff are there. 23% um, of our students are at Nessicus, 23% of our staff. So there are some that are a little farther off, but like I said, that has to really do with the, need, the programming at, at the high school, for instance. So this is where we're sitting um, for the town assessments. Overall, it's a 2.01% increase year over year. Um, that does change within the town. So that um, two factors come into play for that. One is the required local contribution, which is set by DESE. And the other piece is, or I should say calculated by Desi. Um, the other piece is that five-year rolling average. Um, that goes in, what comes to play is the required contribution plus the budget balance and then the transportation assessment. So that's what makes up each town's town assessment. Any questions on town assessments? Oh, Greg. Yes. I, we had heard last time, or the time before, from um, Paris about the cuts in the uh, Title I and RBTs. Um, I, I was just wondering, after after that meeting, where do we stand like pre-COVID? Because there was a lot of positions that were added through grant funding, uh, and I'm just curious, like if we're kind of back to where we were, or we're like, not back to where we were. We were able to move some of our. Um, if you remember, we do still have a little bit of our ESSER three funds that we're using for next year to help offset, but we're using some of these other funds like rural aid to help keep some of the positions that were set by ESSER. So yeah. We're not, we're, we're not, not eliminating all the ones that were hired. Correct. Right. And this is last year of ESSER 3. Is this, um, so ESSER 3 has to be used by September 2024. So this upcoming September. Thanks. The last piece of the, um, the budget puzzle is our capital budget. This has not changed um, $1. So year over year is a decrease of $3,674. Um, the big change in some of the towns, because some are seeing an increase, others are seeing a large decrease. Um, we have three projects left on the books. One is Becca Washington for one more year. We have a Wilcona renovation that will come off in FY29, and then the Wilcona building project in FY47. It, for these smaller towns, as their students move through the high school, if they have more, less students going out as seniors and more coming in ninth grade, it does change year to year. Could be pretty drastically, but. 
And that is the budget. Are there any questions? Seeing none. Okay. We've got some motions. Just as a reminder, this is the official budget, and we need a two thirds majority to pass these budgets. So, uh, we'll do that. all right. So, <coughs> one. Final fiscal year 2025 gross salaries and benefits adoption. Whereas that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee on February 8, 2024, adopted a tentative gross salaries contractual salary increase for all employees in active employees insurance benefits budget for the school year 2024 to 2025 in the amount of $20,292,285. Second. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Keep uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like your enthusiasm. <laughs> Therefore, be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee adopts a final gross salary contractual salary increases for all employees and active employee insurance benefits budget for the school year 2024 to 2025 in the amount of 20 million. $53,334 as recommended by the Finance Subcommittee. I'll try seconding that again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, motion is second. Just a reminder, I think there's some that folks that probably should abstain on the salaries pieces of this, I think. Just as a reminder. Um, any questions? Just, just to clarify, Go ahead, the, the people who are abstaining still are part of the number of the two thirds, correct? Okay. Yep. That's for the final. Yeah, it's final. Yeah. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Albert? Yes. Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Kreptries? Yes. Charlotte Crane? Yes. Bonnie Di Tommaso? Bonnie? She's still there. Sorry, yes. <laughs> Dr. Eberwine? Abstain. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Farella? Yes. Dr. Gelinas? Abstain. Mr. Lockatel? Yes. Ms. Latizori? Yes. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Abstain. Sarah Tucker? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. We have so number two. Final fiscal year 2020. Hold on. I just wanted to do the count. That's so uh, we have three. 15 minus 3. Yeah, we have 12. 12. 12, so motion carries. All right, so number two, fiscal year 2025 retirees benefits and adoption. Whereas that the Central Virtual Regional School Committee on February 8, 2024, adopted a tentative retirees health insurance benefit budget for the school year 2024 to 2025 in the amount of 2 million. $242,786. Therefore, be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee adopts a final retirees health insurance benefit budget for the school year 2024 to 2025 in the amount of $2,242,786 as recommended by the Finance Subcommittee. Second. Okay, motion is second. Any questions on this one? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Mr. Albert? Yes. Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Kraft Reese? Yes. Charlotte Crane? Yes. Bonnie Di Tommaso? Yes. Dr. Eberwine? Abstain. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Farella? Yes. Dr. Gelinas? Abstain. Mr. Locatel? Yes. Ms. Latizori? Yes. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Sarah Tucker? Yes. Mr. Peters. Yes. Motion carries that one uh, 13 to two. Two abstentions. No, nobody's on now. Next up. Number three, final, this, uh, final fiscal year 2025 operating budget adoption. Whereas that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee on February 8, 2024 adopted a tentative gross operating budget for the school year 2024 to 2025 in the amount of $31,227,719. Therefore, be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee adopts a final gross operating budget for the school year 2024 to 2025 in the amount of $30,993,748 as recommended by the Finance Subcommittee. Be it further resolved 
that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee adopts a final anticipated revenue budget for fiscal year 2025 in the amount of $30,993,748 as recommended by the Finance Subcommittee. Second. Motion and second. Any questions? So. I actually just have a comment. Um, first of all, I really want to thank the Finance Committee for uh, getting that increase down um, to 2.01. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to say is um, I last night at the curriculum subcommittee, uh, Assistant Superintendent Hanal shared um, a anecdote about the math interventionist at the high school who's actually able to go through and look at do nows from every single student and you know pretty much immediately identify those who have not been able to um, master a particular standard and go back and reteach that skill to them. Um, and what that tells me is what we all know, which is that the biggest bang for our buck in terms of education is people. Um, and this budget, we need interventionists. We especially need interventionists for SEL skills. Um, and so I hope that in next year's budget, we can try to get a little bit more creative in the ways that we um, sort of budget our money to be able to get uh, some additional intervention. And that's all. Thank you. Good point. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, roll call vote, please. Mr. Albert? Yes. Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Preferees? Yes. Charlotte Crane? Yes. Bonnie DiTomaso? Yes. Dr. Eberwein? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Farella? Yes. Dr. Gelinas? Yes. Mr. Locatel? Yes. Ms. Latizori? Yes. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Sarah Tucker? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Motion carries. Last one. Number four. Final fiscal year 2025 capital budget adoption. Be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee adopts a final capital budget for the school year 2024 to 2025 in the amount of $2,094,850 as recommended by the Finance Subcommittee. Second. Motion is second. Any questions, comments on this one? I have a question. The, the um, uh, as far as the, the it's not specifically on this budget, but as we look to approve this budget um, for capital expenditures, has subcommittee or, or will uh, finance kind of look at upcoming capital expenditures on like a one, three, five year thing? We have, uh, I think we have three schools that are nearing 30 years on their roofs. Um, yes. So it, it, it just. Mm -hmm. Just so the towns know going forward, or and we know going forward, kind of what our expenses are for those big ticket items. Yeah, I assume so, and that's definitely something at our next finance committee that we can work to put together if we don't already have it. Yeah. Um, so we actually, um, it might have been before mm -hmm. the switch, we have looked at a five year, actually a six year plan of what capital projects. So. Um, now the budget season's over, we're going to, I think, add it to every... Yeah, you have time for more budget. Well, now we have more time in those meetings. It's something we want to look at at each meeting, just kind of see where we're at. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Alpert? <coughs> yes. Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Kreftries? Yes. Charlotte Crane? Yes. Ms. Tomaso. Yes. Dr. Eberwein? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Farella? Yes. Dr. Gelinas? Dr. Gelinas? Yes. Sorry. That's okay. Mr. Lacato? Yes. Ms. Latizori? Yes. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Sarah Tucker? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Motion carries. Well, anything else? There? That's it. All right. Yeah, you already went through the meeting. <laughs> we we flip that. Okay, next up is policy. All right. This one should be very quick. 
Um, we met on March 6th at Nessicus uh, to continue our review of Section B with Liz LaFon from MASC. Um, most of that discussion uh, involved incorporation of um, the existing bylaws into other sections of the um, policy manual. Um, and we spent um, a you know, significant amount of time discussing uh, sort of the specifics of how we wanted to lay out how our um, committee would meet um, and also how our subcommittees would be formed and their responsibilities assigned. Um, we did not finish Section B, so we will continue that um, review at our next meeting on April 3rd at 6.30 at Nessicus, um, where we will hopefully finish Section B and possibly uh, begin reviewing Section C. Any questions for Sean? Seeing none. Okay, moving on. Next up is personnel. I have no report. Safety and wellness. Uh, safety and wellness met on March 7th. Uh, we got a, a uh, illness update from head nurse Kelly Jean Gallagher. Uh, she reported that the winter break led to a calm down of illness throughout the district and schools are currently seeing GI illnesses, um, higher, higher than usual cases of pink eye, lower numbers of strep than usual, and a quote unquote spring cold going on. Right now there are at home COVID tests available for anyone who needs one or wants one and can be sent home. Uh, she also reported that while the CDC has changed its five day quarantine recommendation for COVID infections, the district is required to follow a different guidance set by the state so when this specific guidance has been changed, uh, the schools will change it at that point. Uh, the current district rule for any student who is sick is that they must be 24 hours fever free with no medication before they may return to school. Uh, after that, we also had a presentation from the Director of Food Services, John Tranfaglia, and he presented on the per meal budget increase of four dollars or two Four dollars and thirty-eight cents for lunches, and two dollars and seventy-three cents for breakfast, uh, to match with federal regulations. He explained that this increase will impact students and families only when they purchase a second meal, but it gives the food services department a much larger budget to do things such as improve daily variety of fruits and vegetables available to students. Uh, provide healthier food options such as whole meat, brown rice more frequently, and newer items such as fish and whole beef, which uh, as opposed to um, ground beef. Um, to also create clearer and more descriptive menus with more variety, such as a seven week rotating menu instead of a five week, and uh, work on greater promotion for food services website, including pictures of meals offered at all five schools. Um, he also said that that larger budgets will help hire staff to fill previously unfilled slots and to improve kitchen infrastructure as needed such as um, ideas that he had were the kitchen equipment at Kittredge, uh, a specific oven at Craneville, uh, a steamer or steam kettle at Nessicus, and a variety of smaller things. Um, beyond that our next meeting is on will be on uh, Thursday, April 25th, and we'll be looking to discuss the district's second quarter bullying infractions report. Um, and then we have two different topics. We're not sure how we're gonna split, split up this time. Uh, preventative sports safety and injury and concussion protocol, and those will be with um, the athletic director, Ali Borowski, I believe if I mm -hmm. pronounced my name, Borowski, mm -hmm. and uh, head nurse, uh, Kelly Jean. Any questions? Uh, the only thing I want to add too is that John is going to be reaching out to principals to schedule uh, some family nights so that we can get some input from families for lunches as well. Um, so we increased the cost of lunch. Um, my understanding was that the, uh, the choices that are offered was also going to increase like, mm -hmm. in accordance with do we know when that's? Uh, he said that as of April, that they're looking. They can, they've, he's already started 
some of the newer vegetables and stuff with um, specifically at Beckett Washington, I think he said. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the new variety stuff he said starting April is when those things are going to start improving. And then the seven week menu is going to be starting next school year. Right, yeah. I, I just assumed they'd be working through some back stock and to get to that part. Good. Anything else? Okay. okay. Thank you. Next up is the Okonabui project. Nothing to report there. The regional ad hoc report. Um, we've been waiting to hear back from Desi. Um, we heard from Jay uh, today, actually, that uh, we should hear back from Desi preliminarily next week. But we have the we have to get the language out to the towns, so uh, I think um, Leslie, you, did you get an answer from Russ that we can use that? Yes. Yeah, so we I went to two different sources to make sure um, we could have a warrant on the towns, um, and what um, so I went to Mars and also um, Attorney Dupre. Both Mars and Attorney Dupre assured me that we can go to the towns with some language, which Mars is crafting for us. And then we also run by Attorney Dupre. That will be sent to the towns um, probably tomorrow afternoon. Um, and we can actually ask them to put that on their agendas um, just prior to final approval by DESE. So um, that is the plan right now. Yeah, and so when we get final approval, I mean, we just need to be have the language on the warrants 45 days ahead, but we don't have to have the document there. But as soon as we get the document, we'll send that out to all the towns and everybody else. Any questions, comments? Yeah. Will we, um, the regional ad, ad hoc committee, um, will we be discussing kind of strategy or, or how to go to, you know, for members of that committee to go to different town meetings and, and answer questions is, is Jay. Um, yeah, how, how are we going to handle that at the town meetings so that we can inform the residents, we can answer questions? I mean, I'm at all the town meetings. Um, <laughs> and the, I think there's only one that I won't be at this year. Um, Greg is at the town meetings. And usually, there's a school committee member that comes to the town meetings. And many of our school committee members have been on, were on the regional ad hoc. So I would anticipate that each town meeting will be individuals that can answer the questions. I mean, I can answer most of them, I'm pretty sure. Um, and uh, like I said, a lot of our school committee members will be able to answer them as well. Okay. Just, just something to think yeah. about, because there's, mm -hmm. there, there's, a, there's a lot in there. Um, yeah, so. I, would, I would think that, I mean, we can reach out to them. I would think there would be an interest um, those those individuals that were on the regional ad hoc are usually individuals that are pretty active in their mm -hmm. town government. So I would anticipate knowing that committee um, that many of them will be there. Yeah. Okay. I was also going to say that I mean the regional ad hoc committee hasn't met because it's, it's part of a you know, much larger group, not just the mm -hmm. school committee, right? And there hasn't been. A need for them to meet, and I don't know that there will be, but I'm just waiting for Desi to uh, get back to us to, in case they come back with anything substantive that requires opening it all up again, which I don't anticipate any of that because we work through Mars, so um, and they have a direct line to Desi, so I think we should be okay in that respect, but I'm still uh, waiting for their final answer for sure. But there is some discussion in Beckett about moving the time of the meeting, so as soon as I hear definitively, I'll let you know. But for their town mm -hmm. meeting, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, for sure. They were talking in the afternoon. Oh, not the date. No. Just the time of the Just the oh, time. Oh, okay. Cool. <clears throat> Anything else? Any other question? Okay. Um, next up is the superintendent evaluation at uh, Okay, well, we met on February 26th. And all of our members were present with the superintendent. And the purpose of the meeting was to comply with the task of meeting quarterly with the superintendent to review progress and goals. And Leslie provided us with a PowerPoint presentation that I will share with you next time after we meet the second time. So I'll share that with you then. And that served as her guide to her work towards the school committee approved goals. Relative to goal one, student achievement, Leslie shared hallmarks of effective instruction, 
the work towards implementation of a new literacy curriculum, and the four to six, four to six week walkthrough schedule. In terms of goal two, Leslie shared the efforts being made relative to the district improvement plan, the portrait of a graduate work survey, <coughs> and the PMA, and that stands for Prevention Needs Assessment Data. The work relevant to goal three, Leslie provided information regarding the self-free learning environment and the district wellness advisory board. She additionally shared specific information regarding ways in which she regularly communicates with the administrative team, the staff, the families, as well as the CBRSD school committee. We'll be meeting again late May, early June, date to be determined, and Leslie will provide us at that point with her end of the year summer report. And just as an aside, the ad hoc committee was very positive about the impressions about the progress being made. And we totally thank Leslie for being so transparent. Did I miss anything? <laughs> no, okay. Any uh, questions? Comments, concerns? All right, thank you. All right, um, we're up to uh, old business. Any old business? Any new business? Remarks of the Good Committee. The Read Across America was just really fun. Yeah. So we had a good time. I had a good time at Beckett, Washington. I know that you went to Beckett, Washington. Too. Yeah, I'd never been there before. It was it's such nice. a, yeah, it was cool. And they had some cool things that the principal was showing me. Nice cool. Thanks for doing that. Sure. I didn't have time. And I got to go to um, Beckett, Washington, and Kittredge, and I just, the kids were just terrific. And it was a really rewarding experience, so thank you. Thanks, Bonnie. Thanks. Um, this coming Saturday is the uh, Berkshire Innovative Center's Robotics Challenge, and it's being hosted here at Wakata. And I will be there. I'm very excited to see it. That's cool. cool. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Mr. Alpert? Yes. Mr. Case? Yes. Dr. Preparese? Yes. Charlotte Crane? Yes. Bonnie DiTomaso? Yes. Dr. Eberwein? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Farella? Yes. Dr. Gelinas? Yes. Mr. Locatel? Yes. Ms. Latizori? Yes. Ms. Lounsbury? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Sarah Tucker? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Motion adjourned. Thank you all. For, uh, we have a budget and a chance for discussion, everybody. <laughs>